Um, that you inherit from your mother. Truly, from my mother, Leonora Cosinari. How much may it amount to? Indeed, sir, said Andrea. I assure you, I have never given the subject a thought, but I suppose it must have been at least two millions. Donglar felt as much overcome with joy as the miser who finds a lost treasure, or as the shipwrecked mariner who feels himself on solid ground instead of in the abyss which he expected would swallow him up. Well, sir, said Andrea, bowing to the banker respectfully. That's mine. I hope. What are you eating? You may not only Let me see it, said Donglar. But consider it a settled. Let me see it. If no obstacle arises on your part. I am indeed rejoiced, said Andrea. But, said Donglar thoughtfully, how is it that your patron, Monsieur de Monte Cristo, did not make his proposal for you? Andrea blushed imperceptibly. I have just left the Count, sir, said he. He is, doubtless, a delightful man, but inconceivably peculiar in his ideas. He esteems me highly. He even told me he had not the slightest doubt that my father would give me the capital instead of the interest of my property. He has promised to use his influence to obtain it for me, but he also declared that he never had taken on himself the responsibility of making proposals for another, and he never would. I must, however, do him the justice to add that he assured me if ever he had regretted the repugnance he felt to such a step it was on this occasion, because he thought the projected union would be a happy and suitable one. Besides, if he will do nothing officially, he will answer any questions you propose to him. And now, continued he with one of his most charming smiles, having finished talking to the father-in-law, I must address myself to the banker. And what may you have to say to him? said Donglar, laughing in his turn. That the day after tomorrow, I shall have to draw upon you for about 4,000 francs. But the Count, expecting my bachelor's revenue, could not suffice for the coming month's outlay, has offered me a draft for 20,000 francs. It bears his signature, as you see, which is all sufficient. Bring me a million such as that, said Donglar. I shall be well pleased, putting the draft in his pocket. Fix your own hour for tomorrow, and my cashier shall call on you with a cheque for 80,000 francs. At ten o'clock, then, if you please. I should like it early, as I am going into the country tomorrow. Very well. At ten o'clock, you are still at the Hôtel de France? Yes. The following morning, with the banker's usual punctuality, the 80,000 francs were placed in the young man's hands as he was on the point of starting, after having left 200 francs for Caderousse. He went out chiefly to avoid this dangerous enemy, and returned as late as possible in the evening. But scarcely had he stepped out of his carriage, when the porter met him with a parcel in his hand. Sir, said he, that man has been here. What man? said Andrea. What are you doing? Apparently forgetting him, whom he but too that well toy? recollected. Can I see it? Him to whom your excellency you play pays that little huh? annuity. I'll throw this one. Oh, said Andrea. Let me see it. My father's old servant. Can when I have it? Gave him the two hundred Let me have it. I had left for him. Yes, your excellency. Can I have it? Andrea it. had expressed <gasps> a wish to be. Did you hear the dressed. chipmunk? But you ready for the ball? You ready? Water. Go get he it. Would not take them. Andrea turned pale. But as it was bring it back! Bring it back! Bring it back! What? He would not have taken Bring it back! said he with slight emotion. No. He wished to speak to your excellency. I told him you were gone That's not a toy. After some dispute, That's mine. He believed me and gave me this letter, which he had brought with him already sealed. Cassiopeia. said Andrea, and he read by the light of his carriage lamp. You know where I live. I expect you tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. Andrea examined it carefully to ascertain if the letter had been open. 